What's up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. The FedEx man just dropped off this huge old pile of parts for a 55 Chevy build right behind me. And I'm gonna tear into it and show you what we got. If you guys are new to the channel, I'd love if you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell notification so you guys can follow along with this entire build from the frame up. So as you guys can see behind me, I have just a bare frame sitting here. Um, I had the original suspension, but I gave it away to another hot rodder who wanted an original six lug suspension. So we gave it to him. I have nothing. I got no front, no back, no nothing. So that's what's in the box. We have an independent front suspension or IFS. It's a Mustang 2 kit from Speedway Motors. Let's dig in and check it out. All right, let's open some boxes. Box in the box. It's like a cross member. And the top hats. Okay, so I just put it upside down in the frame where it's gonna mount, just to kind of see if it's gonna fit, which it is. Um, it's kind of a tight fit, so we're gonna have to do a tiny bit of grinding uh, on both sides just to drop it in, but it's gonna be all right. Here's our top hats. I'll tell you one thing right off the bat that I really like, the welds are excellent in this kit from Speedway. Um, and everything is already wire wheeled, so it's ready to weld. These look like they're in really, really good shape, ready to go right out of the box, so I'm very happy with that. Right, so I'm gonna continue on with the unboxing. Make sure that we have everything that comes with this kit. Those are our pallets of practice. These look like, I assume, yep, brake pads. The shocks for our coilovers from QA1. Lower control arms. What it looks like anyway, yep. Nice, these are beefy. I like it. This looks like a rotor size box. Looks like you guess. Yep, rotors. Lots of little boxes in there. Oh, these are, oh, I know what this is. So, on this rack and pinion that I got, um, it requires two inch extensions because of the widened frame of the 55 Chevy truck. So these are the uh, rack extensions themselves, and then there's new boots that they give you down in there. These are coil springs right here. I'm guessing, yep, these two are two calipers. That's a really nice looking coil spring, gotta tell you. All right, let's check this one. Yeah, these are in fact our two inch drop spindles. Um, they are just in this plain raw steel, so I am gonna have to paint these or powder coat them, unlike the brake caliper brackets, which were already black. So unless I'm totally stupid, the last two boxes, this has to be the upper control arms and part hardware and parts and whatnot. Um, and I'm gonna guess this long box is our rack and pinion and our boxing plates. Let's see. Another box it might be the control arms. Let's see. There goes the upper control arms. Last big tall box here. So the rack and pinion looks really nice. Um, I'm not gonna bother taking it out of the bag. It's just kind of cumbersome holding the camera and everything. It's new actually um, power rack. It's not a remanufactured piece. So I'm pretty happy with that. It does come with those rack extensions that you spoke about. I do have to extend one side. Um, and then I'm running shortened control arms. So I actually have to nip five eighths of an inch off each of the tie rod ends to shorten it a little bit. Ironic, right? You gotta lengthen it, extend it, and then shorten it at the same time. But anyway, the rack itself is a really, really nice rack. Not much else I can say about that. So let's take a closer look at all the parts together and I'll tell you what my thoughts are. I showed you guys the cross member and the top hats already. I'm actually really pleased with those. They're all ready to be welded into that frame. Um, really good construction. The QA1 coilover. I think these are really nice. Um, I had Viking coilovers on my last build, which is a 79 Trans Am. Um, I would say these definitely compare in quality to the Vikings. I think the Vikings might have been polished up a little bit more, but these are definitely really, really nice. They feel solid construction wise. See, these are single adjusting, so one knob basically adjusts your compression and rebound all in one versus with a double adjustable coil over, you have independent controls for each one. We're not really looking to autocross this vehicle here, this 55 Chevy truck. This is going to be a car show and a cruiser and, uh, and you know, just kind of a fun truck to, to ride around in. So. Um, this is going to be fine for our purposes, although the, the dual adjustable is definitely nice. I looked at the instructions earlier, and um, they're actually really, really well thought out and pretty comprehensive, which is kind of a pet peeve I have with a lot of other products. One thing I am kind of disappointed in is the, um, the washers. They don't come with a thrust bearing, and it's not that I'm ragging on QA1 or the product alone, because most coilovers do not come 
with thrust bearings, you have to buy them separately, um, which I fully intend to. But it would have been nice to have those in stock because, um, it, you know, I don't know if you guys know what those are, but they're like a washer uh, with a needle bearing in between it and then another washer. So basically what that does is when you go to um, adjust it on the sleeve, if it's just a straight flat washer like we have here, when you go to adjust it and you have a lot of pressure on it, meaning that there's a car sitting on it, um, it's really kind of difficult to turn onto this on the sleeve. But um, if you have that needle bearing in between the two washers, it's really quite smooth adjusting this even with the weight of the vehicle on it. So that's something that I will be adding is thrust bearings to these. But very happy with the coilover shock overall. And the spring that I showed you earlier, man, they're really gorgeous. Um, I think that was through a company, yeah, they're called True Coil. Really nice polish on those. All right, next up is these caliper brackets. I'm gonna have to say um, I'm actually really impressed with these. They are super beefy, really thick and heavy. And the fact that they're already painted black um, and not cast, I don't have to powder coat them or paint them myself, um, is a huge time saver and I'm super appreciative of that. Um, it's just, you know, these things rust very fast when they're unprotected. And when you're building the car, just little tiny steps like that, like not having to paint one more piece of equipment um, is a real is a real lifesaver for me. So I'm really appreciative of that. I'll take a closer look at it and I'll show you the construction on it. Just a really nice heavy duty piece. And it looks like we have grade eight hardware supplied, which is always nice. All right, so let's take a look at these upper control arms just for the sake of being expeditious and not having the video go too long. I'm only gonna show you the one because they're all pretty much the same. Um, what I like, they are super beefy. They're one inch tubes, which I like. So they're, they're you know really, really stout. I like that there's a screw in ball joint. That's, that's a big deal to me. Um, the ball joint itself is not crappy. I mean, you really, I can't even, there it goes, I just got to budge a little bit. They're really, really stout. So um, if you play with some other control arms ever, um, they're, they kind of wobble around. They feel almost like a toy. These are a good quality ball joints. So I'm very happy with that. Um, negatives, the welds, eh, they're okay. They're not really great. Like that one, I, you know, I don't know, not too crazy about that. Um, don't get me wrong, these are gonna hold just fine, but you know, I just, I would appreciate if people put a little bit more into their welds. I'm not a professional welder myself by any means. Um, I know how to weld, I do it properly, but it's really important to me to try and do things right, especially something that takes as much abuse as something like a control arm does. Um, so again, I have, you know, full confidence that they're, they're strong and they're gonna hold, but it just, they're not the most beautiful welds that you've ever seen. Brake pads, they're just Speedway branded brake pads. These don't look bad by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'll be fine running them for a little while unless they're super dusty, then I'll change them up for something else. But the brake pads, what can I say? All right, coil springs. Um, let's face it, a lot of hot rodding is about aesthetics, when you, especially when you're building the rest of the mod. And um, man, is that a pretty spring or what? Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's really gonna look super nice under there. Spring rates, this is a 500 pound spring rate. Um, a little confusion when we came to choosing that. Uh, I noticed a lot of people will run like a 375 or a 400 for a softer ride, a nicer feel. Um, the guy on the phone uh, said that we used to go with a 700 pound spring rate on that truck. Um, last time I had messed around with somebody who was building the car like this, they had 600 pound spring rates on them and jumping up and down on the front of it, I couldn't even like budge the vehicle at all. So. Um, I'm even a little bit concerned that a 500 pound spring might be uh, a little too much for this build because it's going to be a very lightweight truck. Um, the LS engine that's going in there doesn't weigh too much. I'm stripping a lot of stuff off this frame. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm kind of worried about that. But one really good thing I'm dealing with Speedway, if something is not right in the kit or that they sold you or you're not happy with it or you need to make a change, they are super, super helpful when it comes to customer service. I give them an A+. Plus, so. You know, I could always just call them up and be like, hey, this is, you know, this is not the right spring rate for me. They'll swap them out for me, no problem. So that's always a good thing. Um, I, I would have liked like 400 or 450, I think. This probably would have been the right choice, but they, it wasn't available with this kit. It was 375, the next step up was 500. So we took 500. Time will tell, you know, I really can't say anything until we get everything in there. Um, we are going with a heavier transmission too, so maybe that might make a little bit of a difference. I don't know. We'll see, once we get it all mounted up, we'll be able to make the determination of, uh, of if this is the right choice or not. But for right now, we're gonna roll with it. Um, leave in the comments, let me know what you think about spring rates, because I'm kind of dumb when it comes to that. They also give you these um, rubber coil spring cushions that go in the uh, upper control arm. Nice touch. There's a complete hardware kit. Um, you got your spindle nuts there. There's power rack and steering bushings. Um, you've got spacers for the power rack and steering. 
different bolts. You've got all your bearings and seal kits for the rotors. All that good stuff is in here. This is your brake hardware kit, which is your brake hoses, your slide pins, and uh, banjo fittings and all that good stuff. Um, dust caps in here. And it looks like, yep, the clips to hold the brake lines onto the frame. Drop spindles, which I showed you guys earlier. I'm just cast, so we're gonna have to paint those or uh, maybe even powder coating, I think might be a better choice, but they seem to be of decent quality. The rack, of course, comes with two uh, outer tie rod ends, and it comes with the locker the stop nut for each one of them. Not too much really to say about these. Um, it is a nice stout joint here. Can't push these too, readily, uh, too easily with my hand, so I'm happy about that. I haven't showed you guys is the brakes, which I kind of made a brain fart when I ordered. Um, I wanted initially, I knew that I wanted to go with the upgraded brake, um, the kit comes with brakes, so I just said, okay, send them to me, not realizing that I could have left them off and, you know, didn't have to ship them to me. But um, the brakes that they come with, it's a GM metric caliper, which is kind of like the common caliper that was on every GM vehicle from, I believe, 78 to 88. And I think they still use them up to 2002 on some vehicles. But um, it's that basic single piston GM caliper that's pretty common. The reason I chose Speedway to go with this IFS system is because a lot of the other companies sell it strictly as a kit, right? So whatever they package it as, whatever control arms they give you and brakes and this and that, you're just kind of stuck with that. So if you want to make changes, you have all this other stuff that you don't need. Speedway, you can kind of put this kit together with them on the phone. Um, and it's just, it's, it's very modular, which I like. If you're lucky, if things are cut and dry and everything you need is in that prepackaged kit, then that's great. But a lot of times when you're building something, you know, frame up these old vehicles with parts are not readily available and you're putting stuff on them that never belonged there in the first place. Um, having the ability to really piece it together is huge to me. So you also save a little bit of money. Now with that, because things are a little bit less money, there's a little bit more work involved. Like if you notice that cross member is just raw metal, they wire wheeled it and the gussets that hold the lower control arms, they have to weld it on. There's a little spacer that goes in there that still has to get welded on this. So there's some fabrication work that has to go into it, um, which keeps the cost down for me, but adds more work. So I guess you'd have to decide, you know, what you like better. Do you want to do more work and save a little bit of money? Some people, you know, might think, hey, the less work I have to do, the better, which I understand that mindset as well. So that's something to, be, uh, to keep in mind. But I was on the phone with them, I, man, almost two hours. And uh, we just, we kept switching things out till we got it right. And uh, they were just a pleasure to deal with. It ships everything very, very fast. So like I said, I am going with upgraded brakes. Uh, I'll show you soon what I ended up getting when we get to that point of the build. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet. And it's more content, more videos for you guys anyway. Really happy with the kit. The negatives, I, if I had to pick on this kit, the only thing I would say is after looking at the cross member and how nice it was, especially the welds and everything, and then picking up the control arms and seeing the welds be, well, not as nice, uh, that was a little bit disappointing. If you were to buy this kit uh, online right now, given the, the cost and everything, I guess you really can't complain. It's very common nowadays that you have things welded by a robot or somewhere with overseas or whatever and uh it's it's just not don't take that pride in craftsmanship that you would see here the welds will hold they'll be fine they're you know i've seen a lot worse you know i've seen better but i've definitely seen a lot worse so you know and again i'm splitting hairs it's the control arms that are under the car it's no one's no one's sticking their head in your wheel well and being oh these welds are not the prettiest welds i've ever seen you know still you know you, you hope to see that somebody cares for what they're doing as much as you do. They're fine, I'm happy with them. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint them or powder coat them, but they're definitely gonna need some type of coating. But anyway, guys, that's my IFS kit. Um, I'm gonna get started. I've actually already started clearancing the frame for the boxing plates. I will film uh, the entire installation of this IFS kit coming up next. Um, so stick with me and uh, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Hit that bell notification if you want to follow along and watch this whole build go on. So love to have you guys with me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.